Tim from Strand of Oaks, welcome. It's good to be here. So good to hear you guys. That's cool. That's cool that you guys, you, you, can, uh, you can write songs that are so, uh, so candid and confessional, and then you can have so much fun playing them. Yeah, it's cathartic in the good way. I was yeah. worried... I was worried when this record came out that I would have to have a live-in therapist <laughs> waiting in the wings off stage to be like to after revisit the show. all this stuff. Yeah, but it's turned into like a yeah. like power can come from you know sometimes it feels great to admit the worst parts of your life and then you feel free after it and well they don't sound so bad like that first song talking about being in your basement and discovering your dad's cassettes and you know you know, singing into the mirror and stuff. That sounds not tragic. No, and I think there is something like a badge of honor you wear from living through things. And yeah. I, I, being a teenager was, if I would not ever want to go back there again, <laughs> but I can look back in yeah. golden amber haze of right. youth. Memory is beautiful like that, isn't it? It's just <laughs> exactly. like, wow, I just, it feels better somehow. Now, when you were a kid and you're in that, that teenage basement of yours, were you a loner? Were you the only one who was down there? You didn't have friends you shared that stuff with, necessarily. I'm still kind of a loner. I yeah. Need, I need more friends. Right. I have a tough time leaving. Yeah. It doesn't really change from 15 to 32. Right. Kind of the same still. And you were, uh, so you're looking around for Casios and you're finding music. And I'm just trying to imagine, you know, because we all, I mean, I don't know if we all did, but I certainly had that that kind of a teenage time where yeah. I was just, it was the music that kind of got me through and made sense. And, and um, you know, there were certain records and certain songs that just kind of, kind of um, t took me to, a, to another place that I needed to go. And yeah, and I think I look scary enough now in my life that I'm allowed to be cliche. Yeah. <laughs> so I, because <laughs> I don't know if I would necessarily want to say anything back to me after that, but, um, and I, th I think it's just like, it's like, because you were in a hair metal phase at yeah, the time, is that what you're saying? Exactly. So now the hair and, and the tattoos, it all makes sense. So I feel like with each tattoo and the beard length, I can be more sincere and earnest. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> so... You looked I, the part, right? I truly, like, and with that, I can say things like, music does save. And yeah. I look back at my life and realize that I would not have lived through a lot of those things, if not records. You know, if, if Jeff Buckley's grace wouldn't have come into my life wow. at that point, you wow. know, and just these, these albums that they feel like a, like a whole perspec life perspective shift when you get yeah. to hear them. And it still happens. I mean, I still, I still get that, you know, yeah. and it's one of the biggest gifts I have in my life of just That's so listening. Great. That's so great. I don't know what your beard length was when this happened, but there was an interesting <laughs> change. Um, you also went from being, you know, this sort of a Goshen, Indiana Mennonite family, and next thing you know, you're teaching at a at a Hebrew day school in Philadelphia. Was was the beard part of that phase too? You know, I uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, I, I don't think I've told this story. It was during uh, Purim, and like the when you get to dress up and have a good time and. So I dressed up, assuming that I was, I put a robe on, let my hair down, and I thought I looked like Moses. And one of the rabbis came up and said, Tim, you got the wrong prophet going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, was, and I just, I thought I was just... Busted. Yeah, busted. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a, it's been a interesting journey. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, I also, I love the fact that, that um, you know, you also had this, this Jeff Buckley phase, you know, this, this acoustic, yeah. um, confessional, but, but really introspective and sparse and, and, and folk music, really. Yeah. Um, and then that took you only so far. And then, um, you know, I hate to make light of this, but sort of what happened to you sounds kind of like a bad country song. It you know, is. let's see. <laughs> My wife cheated on me. Yep. I wrecked the car, and yeah. my house burned down. Yeah. I have a great... Uh, my bios read so well. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a fantastically written bio, and it's unfortunately, like a, yeah. it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I wish... I wish... I always say, like, I wish my bio... I should just start thinking, like, he wins a million dollars and moves right, to you Key can, West. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yet, it's like, no, it, it reads for... It makes a great read, but unfortunately, living through it, yeah. it, it has its tolls. <laughs> Except that, except that again, the, the the second song you just played, you know, it's really about being uh, being truer to yourself and being, you know, 
a, a little closer and yep. not not pretending, not not faking anybody out. You know? That's the best way to put it. And I feel like this whole record experience with my newest one has been just getting closer to who I am. And I find that no matter how old you are, you go through these patterns and phases in your life where you repeat things that you should like, why do I keep doing this? Why do I? And it, and I, that's why that song talks about me being 15, because it's not like I'm regressing back to that, but it's like, what gave me so much joy? And yeah. I almost felt like the confessional folk music, it's amazing music, and I listen to that all the time. But for me, it pr pr proved to be this like shelter away yeah. from like, it's, it was protection. Yeah. If I write a story song about a mountain, you know, and I, it's an allegory for my life falling apart, then that's still safe. But then yeah. I was like, I don't want to write about a mountain anymore. Or, you know, like a, yeah. the Metaphors road. are cool, but what about my real life? Yeah, yeah. and, and it, was, it was such a selfishly made record that removing the symbolism is something I need to do in my actual personal existence. Right. And it just translated the music and the yeah. honesty proved to be the most yeah it's just it's changed my life really yeah so you wrote a bunch of songs in a short period of time yeah and was there anything that was off limits any songs you're like wow that one's a little too close to the bone for me to actually share it wasn't i mean i i had to i wrote everything on this but the only things that was off limits were pitying i didn't want any songs to feel like i was pitying myself or you know, feeling sorry for myself or anything like that. That's good because you're one of the few uh, grown-ups who has actually been able to manifest your 15-year-old fantasy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's what, I mean, I, sh I, I, I sit back and I think what I'm doing right now and what my life is. And, you know, I was probably on the, I was probably an undiagnosed ADHD kid that would have either been in jail or working in, you know, like a factory or something. I'm like, well, now I get to play guitar. And sit with you, and you know yeah. it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Oh, and I, I'm surprisingly a positive. Everyone gets shocked when they're like, "Why are you in such a good mood?" I was like, "Well, my records are that place that I'm allowed to. That's where that part of me comes out. Right. And then the rest of it's like, well, you're on you're on the road with a great band, yep. and you guys seem to get along. Yep. And um, it just it it's fun. It's the best. It's the best, right? And I just feel like, as far as I've I've learned this sacred thing of the idea of what it means to do this, what we're doing right now, and what it means to be in a room with people. And I used to be, I didn't ever take it for granted, but I didn't think about it enough. And these tours and these shows, I realized how amazing it is to share this with people and to share this live and to have that connection because I'm such a, I'm an inherently a very lonely person. And this is the one time in my life where I don't feel that way. Yeah. And again, I'm being cliche, but you know, I have a skull on my arm, so I'm totally, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, but no, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're in a, we're in this funky old, uh, you know, renovated church where this exactly. is the point, right? Yeah. It's like, let's get real, let's get true and let's inspire each other and hang out. And, and I want people to, like, yeah. I, and, and that's, what's been so amazing. Like you never, you don't get to choose your family and you don't get to choose your fans. And what happened with Strand of Oaks was with this record and people actually bought tickets to shows and bought records for the first time. And I have been so amazed that everyone that comes to my shows is exactly the people that I would hope to listen to my music. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no like, there's no rules at the door. I want right. everybody to come. And if you just want to like experience however you want to, and yeah. it's been like, that's, I, I don't know what to do with myself now when I'm not playing live. It's yeah. just my favorite thing to do. Well, it's, that's going to be interesting because there's, there's a little chunk of time coming up where you don't have a lot of gigs. Yeah. So, um, new you, record. Yeah, you're going to have to make yeah. like five new yeah. records. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have plenty of records to make. There's so many in my you head You just right wrote now. three songs in the studio yeah. right before the show, right? Yeah, you, he gave me one of the amazing... I, I don't get to play 1955 Les Pauls that often, so I just the spirit rang through and I... So if you just see me hang around Boulder, yeah, I'm just here for the. <laughs> I gave him the key living in, my in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's about sharing, right? Yeah. It's about feeling, and that's what we're all about here. Anyway, I'm glad you could make it. Glad you could stop by. Etn, the band sounds great. Um, welcome, and, and let's let's get back to music. Sounds good. Yeah, thanks. Strand of Oaks.